So before we jump into the detail about where to go for Community Day, let's talk about what Pokemon is for May. And of course, like everybody knows, it's Charmander. And Shiny Charmander is gold or yellow, depending on how they, you know, they do it. With Charmeleon being gold or yellow as well. And of course, what we're all looking forward to is a black Charizard. Well, let's talk about the moveset because so every Community Day Pokemon gets a new moveset, at least an exclusive moveset. And for me, I want to call it out right now because from the pattern before, every Community Day Pokemon uh, special moveset came from either the, the card game or the main series game. So I'm calling it now that I believe the special moveset for Charizard is going to be Flare Blitz. And hopefully I'm right. But if I am right, Definitely subscribe to my channel and like my video because I called it. <laughs> wow, so as soon as I opened the map, Charmander popped up. Oh, two Charmander popped up. All right, well, definitely want to use pineapple because you want all the Charmander candy. All right, so quickly I want to talk about the mechanics of Pokestops. When a Pokestop is blue, it means that you can spin it, right? It could give you items, of course. And when you spin it, you have about five minutes for it to turn blue again. When you set off a lure and the first Pokemon comes out, the next spawn is gonna be within three minutes. All Pokemon from lures are on a shorter timer from natural spawns. So Pokemon that spawn from a lure have a three minute window to catch. It's much shorter from natural spawn rate, but we'll get to that in a second. A new Pokemon popped up around a lure, so it's always gonna be replaced by one Pokemon. So you always have three minutes to catch. Spawn points. This is gonna be the most important information about where to go for community day. All right, so I got a stranger joining me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that there's a Blissey somewhere nearby. Over at the gym over there. I don't know if I should believe him. Well, I'll show it to you in just a second. I, I don't know. I, I bet thing. you'll show me in a second. <laughs> uh, oh no, I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Me and mom gonna get some uh, Charmanders, and uh, the last time I was here, there was like two crackheads trying to like talk to me. Well, you know, I can't help it that you didn't catch it, so. Thank God I didn't catch it. We're gonna get down to business. This is gonna be a little technical, so bear with me, and I'm gonna go kind of fast, and pretty much I'm gonna tell you about all the mechanics of spawn point. What we got here, these little blue dots, are spawn point. So as you can see right here, I'm at. Sorry, one. So, in Hourglass Park, there's 31 spawn points. One of the most important thing about this to understand is that each spawn point has either a 30 minute timer or a 60 minute timer. One spawn point only produces one 30 minute timer Pokemon and one spawn point only produces 60 minute timer Pokemon spawns. The way how uh, Pokemon spawns is that every single Pokemon is on a timer. For the more common ones, they're on a shorter timer like Pidgeys, Rattatat, so it makes them spawn more and those are considered as common ones. Those with a longer, slightly longer timer, they're called uncommon. So of course with rare Pokemon like say like Charizard, Lapras, Snorlax, Dragonite, they're on much longer timer. So within like say a day or two days or something like that, they will spawn up at a location. All right, and to add on to this, so Sentinel Hills discovered that the Community Day Pokemon spawn rate increases by 25 to 50%. I got some friends joining me. What's up, man? How you doing? What's up, dude? You want to say hi to my channel, dude? What up? How you doing? Can you tell everybody your name? Uh, my name is Hector. Oh, wow. My daughter Natalia. Got my, my other son and my wife here playing. You got the whole family here. Yeah. Pokemon is a great game for family. Yes, it is. And what team are you? Are you guys on the same team? No, uh, me and her are in Valor, and my wife and her son are in Miss. Oh. So how? The, so I'm always interested about how families or like couples or like friends they always get on different teams. How do you guys choose uh, different teams? Well, I've always I always liked Charmander, so I've always been Team Valor. She likes Articuno, so she went with Team Mystic. Okay. And, you know, I, to me, the teams are kind of like irrelevant when it comes to being a solo player. Yeah. Once you get more people involved, obviously it's not. It becomes a big, big deal. Like the last time we did the the raid by your restaurant. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the big community the the teams really matter but I, per, I think it's just a, a matter of personal um, preference oh, okay cool why not so you guys go help take down the raid over there all right so going to a lot of raid right now and uh me and some people walking there as fast as i can oh what's up stranger how are you hi there's a corner cool, uh, hustler i met her when she was just a noob back in the day now she's now she's a little 40. <laughs> What's your name? Herb. Herb. Alright, Mike and 
Eric. Eric, okay. Come on, we gotta start, guys. I gotta have a bike in the extra. Kenpachi? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Kenpachi. Are you doing a private one? Yeah. Nice. Tom, nice to meet you. Alright. I know, I've seen you on the uh, Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's seen you. I've been around. <laughs> I'm Tom. Brian. Alright, nice to meet you. Hey, Tom. Jem. Jem? Oh, it's nice to meet you. Butterbeef, Snorlax, and Charmander. Oh, how fitting. Butterbeef, Snorlax, and Charmander. Sorry, I don't mean to be in a hurry. Have an EX rate in 15 minutes. Oh! Everyone's gonna wait for you? Yeah, I told them to, you know, Mystics to wait for me. Oh, okay, but say, <laughs> you know, this is kind of cutting close for EX ray like... <laughs> when people, when people, uh... It's, it's tough to make people wait. <laughs> okay, not in Mira Mesa. <laughs> Twenty fifty six. That is about eighty nine percent. What's your name, man? Huh? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the help. That is called. That is literally called a dead bunny. Yeah. If you break that, I'm gonna cry. I'm serious. I'm gonna cry. If you break that, yes. Huh? I wouldn't lie about that. <laughs> that is a gorilla pod. It helps hold the camera up from falling down. All right, still got it. Mm. All right, so now, all right. So quickly about weather, as you can see on the top right hand corner is a sun and at every top of the hour, it changes. So although when I got here, it was uh, cloudy weather as you see right here, at the top of the hour, it changed to sunny weather. And what, uh, what I said earlier, Discord found that during community day event, increase the community day Pokemon spawn by 25 to 50%. So the question is, does weather affect IVs for community day Pokemon? And in Germany, during the Jatini community day event, since Jatini is a dragon, it got boosted by windy weather and someone caught a level 35, 100% shiny Jatini in Germany. If you live in a sunny area like in San Diego, Definitely you want to check the IV for all the Charmanders you catch because it's also going to be boosted by the weather. They have a higher percentage of finding a high IV Charmander that hopefully it will be a shiny and you can evolve to a really nice black Charizard. Weather does increase the spawn rates from spawn points and we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so how does weather affect spawn points? So all grass, ground, and fire type Pokemon is gonna have priorities and the spawn point is going to favor grass, ground, and fire during the weather boost. And like I said, every hour is gonna change and spawn points are affected by that. All right, so let's talk more in detail about spawn points when we get back. I just wanna quickly debunk a myth that people have about spawn points and cell phone data. The myth is that people believe that the more people around, the more cell phone data, it will increase the spawn rates in the area. However, that is not true because spawn rate is only affected by spawn points. So cell phone does not increase spawn rate. It does help trigger spawn points. Say you're in a room full of like a thousand people and there's only one spawn point there. No matter how many people in the room, will not, it will not change anything because Pokemon's only spawn from spawn point. Keep that in mind that it's not about the people, it's about the uh, spawn points. But speaking of spawn point increase, there's some good news from a Redditor online. An English player uh, posted on Reddit that he submitted portal a few months ago and today he woke up with 10 new portals in Ingress. So they are approving portal submissions from before, meaning that we should be seeing new Pokestop or gyms popping up soon. Map, pretty much what a map does is that they uh, gather a lot of data and pretty much they you know, report back so you can get to see IVs, Pokestops, gems, and raids. And all these blue dots that you're seeing right here, right now, are all spawn points. And so before the maps went down, this is all the recorded spawn points that Center Hills has gathered. By my restaurant, which is on College in El Cajon, is a nicely uh, condensed spawn point area. Okay, so I know everyone's wondering, is Bubble the best place to go for community day? Well, let's see, so here's a rose garden right here, and the rose garden has two spawn points, and then on the left side, kind of like in that gazebo, has one on the left side, and two on the other side next to the Pokestops around there. If you're going to be walking around Balboa, walking on the main walkway of Balboa only has one, two, 
three, four, five that you could probably reach from the middle. For future events, if you go to Balboa, I would suggest going uh, behind the Natural History Museum. When you go to Balboa and you walk down the stairs, you want to make a right and then make a left through all those buildings because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You hit 12 spawn points and then you can walk down the little pond and you probably, yeah, go through two. Probably just go down to the Japanese Friendship Garden and just walk back. So I know what you guys are thinking that, you know, I have a map, I can see all the spawn points, you know, it's not fair for other people and, you know, in other countries and other states, but you can find a good location to play Community Day without a map. And the way you do that is you can go to your favorite locations, whether it be, it could be a park, parking lot, because sometimes parking lots have a lot of spawn points. Uh, it could be any place with a lot of Pokestop as well. And if you go there without any lures or incense and you know you can see right here i was in ib and there's a little close like an ib that you know has a lost spawn cluster boom 14 pokemons popped up in the area and of course i double checked the map and there were 14 spawn points there so any location that has a good amount of pokestops and is in a you know safe and nice location check the natural spawn map it out so you, you know, if you're like in this, you know, in one part of the park, map out how many po Pokemons you see. And in one hour, you should be able to see all the spawns. That's including 30 minute spawns and 60 minute spawn points. That's the best way to find a good location with a lot of spawn points. Eight hours of editing and I'm done. And I'm not done. All right, so quickly, I want to talk about Earth Day. I really do appreciate Nantic doing this, you know, just like how they did with the Sendai Tsunami Relief they brought in more tourism uh, with the Lapras event and with the earthquake in Kumamoto uh, with the Snorlax event and that's really cool. I think we all can really appreciate that a game company is taking a step to encourage these kind of events to support the community and the economy around the, around the area because the Lapras event looked amazing I'm sure. Alright, thanks for watching you guys. If you're new to my channel, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I do Pokemon related tips, tricks, news, and everything Pokemon Go related. If you like this video, check out my Latios raid and I show you how to do the quick catch trick for regular Pokemon and for legendaries. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below for tips, tricks, and everything Pokemon Go related news. So good luck everybody. Peace. You know, I'll be honest, I don't really care about the shirt. Uh, style and a shirt. What? No way, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's my new fair shirt. I'm using that. <laughs> okay, I do like the shirt. The lab shirt is pretty cool. Done deal. All right, good job, Nanatic.